Hi, thanks for watching my video on visible banking. Today we are in Athens uh, at the online financial services mm -hmm. conference from the EFMA and I'm with Tony Debray, senior consultant. Hi Tony. Hi, how are you? I'm very well and you? Very nice, thank you very much. Well, it's good to meet you at last. Yeah, long time. Uh, yes. All the emails and the uh, LinkedIn. Uh, yeah. And visible banking, we've yeah. exchanged a few emails on Web 2.0. Yeah, yeah. Um, so first of all, Tony, uh, could you please introduce yourself? Yeah. Well, my name is Tony Bray. I'm uh, working already for a long time in and around financial services. Uh, I always have been very interested in how you can use technology in either making our lives better or solving uh, teaching or business or marketing or problems that occur around us. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, next to that, I'm doing a lot of presentations. I'm writing books. I do that during the time that I either don't sleep or uh, the rest of the family is going to church. And I think, yeah, that's about it. You're a busy man, actually, waking up at 5 a.m. and uh, <laughs> yeah. very productive as well. Yeah. Well, you said yesterday, so you presented mm -hmm. yesterday about Web 2.0, mm -hmm. more internal initiatives, mm -hmm. if I may say, uh, and not customer-facing, uh, mm -hmm. simply because or mainly because a few other presenters were targeting more the customer, yeah, uh, the marketing aspect of it. Um, you said that you liked chaos. I, yeah. I like the quote, yeah? yeah? It's an opportunity to create something new, yeah? yeah. yeah. So I really see, like, opportunities and not risk and as mm. you said chaos could be good as well in 2001 I believe you were mm. one of the the people who uh, advised to yeah. potentially buy PayPal yeah that's correct yeah and we know yeah. what happens yeah. since then yeah yeah, um, yeah. sorry now you could you completely right uh, but what we actually saw with a number of people also from within and outside the company is that um, there were new entrants coming into the market that didn't have the problems that we had so they had the experience and knowledge of the industry, but they could start all over with, with a very, very sophisticated infrastructure. And they were very flexible, uh, very small organizations. And we saw that uh, it would be growing very, very quickly. And then instead of trying to fight them, it would be a good idea at a rather low price to actually buy them. Because it would give us a lot of extra capabilities, mm -hmm. a lot of extra new clients, without having to open overall uh, in all the countries different branches. So that was the idea at that point in time. But no traction? No, it was, it was uh, too quick for a lot of people that, that thought that, uh, that e-commerce was interesting, but that it basically would just have a very small impact on, on the way large global banks would keep on operating in the next uh, 20 or 30 years. And we saw the outcome again and yeah, <laughs> yeah. the result today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you said that the banks, uh, organizations, need to be more agile, mm -hmm. uh, probably smaller, more uh, yeah. proactive, yeah. and you said dinosaurs, so uh, can't adapt to yeah. new environments, yeah. and I guess comparing banks to dinosaurs. Yeah. Could you please talk a bit more about that, and your book, I guess, you wrote a yeah. book about it? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it's, it, actually, it's, it's, it's rather logical when you think about it. You know, it's, uh, if you're very big, and you're a lot of people, and uh, you're everywhere, I mean, it means that if something happens to you, you know, if you're pinched in your bottom or whatever, you know, I mean, it's very difficult to react. And then the discussion started over already a very long time ago that, you know, if, if banking is really getting global and that if, if technology is getting really important and if you actually have to be able to do anything for any of your clients very quickly, then, then there's only one choice, which is make yourself smaller, yeah, mm -hmm. and, and make sure that you can not only react to what's going on, but that you can also be proactive and do things together with your clients. Now, at, at this point in time, as I explained a bit yesterday, the discussion both from the, the business school side as from the IT companies like Microsoft started was saying, you know, actually large global banks and large European banks are nothing more than dinosaurs mm -hmm. because they think they're in charge, but the moment the, the meteorite of the new technologies will hit, I mean, they will be extinct. Now, independent of if the future of the dinosaurs metaphor works, it, it is an interesting way to look at things and look at yourself and say, hey, you know, for instance, in my case, I'm, I was 10 kilos overweighted. I started football again. Now I start to become agile again because I'm starting to lose weight. So with well big done, companies, like. it's the same, the same thing. And the, the new technology gives us the opportunity, all of us together, to actually achieve these goals. Correct. I yeah. agree with you, obviously. But you said, and I like the quote again, new technology, if you don't change the organization or the way you work, so new technology plus old organization equals expensive old organization. <laughs> yeah. That was a good one. Yeah. Could, you, um, could you talk about that? Yeah. 
Now this, this is a quote from a, from a good friend of mine who's the director of Dialogues House in the Netherlands. And I think what we what we saw in all these big projects across the colleague banks and ourselves also is that if you only look at new technology as a kind of gadget and that you don't any do anything with it the moment it really starts to um, you know uh, threaten your current organization I mean if you use all these kind of new technologies but you still have the big organization then it's just very expensive it will just be a gadget and, and we think that's one of the main reasons why in, in a lot of big big large banks the new technologies like social media you've been talking about yesterday or web 2.0 have not been taken up mm -hmm. because if you really implement these things it means that a lot of traditional large parts of the organization will, will, will not have a purpose anymore in, including the large IT companies within and outside of large banks so it, they see it as a threat Indeed, yeah. Not an opportunity. Not an opportunity, yeah. It's good to see the commitment from a CEO, like yeah, you talked yeah. about Dialogue House yeah, and the yeah. innovation, yeah. Uh, the building you have, yeah, uh, yeah. cutting edge. Yeah. And uh, again, in social media, we see that we see that banks, organizations, mm -hmm. need to have support from someone from the senior management, yeah. someone who gets it. That's yeah. very important. Yeah. Seven killer apps, uh, social media, or Web 2.0 yeah, yeah. within the company. Yeah. Could you uh, maybe pick up the, the top two or three and explain your uh, share yeah. your vision with us yeah yeah like, like you said in the beginning of, of our discussion the uh, I on purposely only talked about the internal ones internal meaning not so much the ones towards the clients but mm -hmm. internal as, a, as an organization yes and I think the number of them are, are, are very simple to describe the first one is is that it's a very good way to actually start to monitor in all different kind of ways uh, what's going on in your own organization. Now, of course, within the current context of the final uh, financial crisis, that has taken up an extra dimension. Mm -hmm. So, in, in our opinion, everything which has to do with mediating and monitoring is, will be a, uh, a killer app. Yeah? The, the second one will be, uh, it's a really great opportunity to make your uh, dinosaur architecture more flexible. The third one is, is that, uh, as you were explaining yesterday also, is that um, if, if you see the processes and, and, and the things you do for clients as one process within your own organization, mm -hmm. then it's a great way to, re to heal and repair, like you were saying, broken processes. Uh, so that's the third one. The fourth one is, is that we discovered that if we use these kind of technologies, we can actually decommission a lot of very expensive uh, standalone uh, components. And my famous example is workflow tools and all kinds of other things that the functionality of these kind of things you can you can easily replace by a number of the the, the very sophisticated Web 2.0 tools which are now in the market, which are rule driven, mm -hmm. and and which can be changed and implemented rather quickly. Uh, my next one would be global compliance. Again, a very hot topic. And you worked in that before, just like you explained to me. Mm -hmm. Is that we we found out that we it's very easy with these tools to implement local uh, e-compliance applications in which you actually also can, can cover the big problem we all have is that there's a difference between global legislation and local implementation. Mm -hmm. And we saw that, that both in terms of time and money, uh, it was really rather easy with the knowledge that you have in the company to implement these kind of uh, applications, again, being part of your commercial process. Uh, so if I take a small example in the Netherlands, all retail clients in the Netherlands and all new clients in the Netherlands that have their own company, they automatically are monitored and risk assessed by this module that we have in the Netherlands. So nobody knows it, but it's already part of the, the, the business process. And it takes a lot of work out of the hands of the, of the sales managers and the business support people also. And for compliance, that's very good, because if they know that it's done in a proper way, then it's actually management by exception. How did you, um, can you talk about ROI just for 30 seconds? So, uh, how did you sell those projects, those um, concepts within the organization? Well, there, there were actually different ways. The, the first one was is that we, 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 did, we did it in a number of countries uh, worldwide. And the, the limit was very easy. We didn't have more than two and a half million euros. And it had to be done. And nobody was able to do it at that point, at that time, in such a short period of time at so low cost. The other ones was is actually that uh, in, in the compliance space after 2004, a number of big projects with traditional providers had tried to build it and it didn't work and it cost a lot of money mm -hmm. and, and then they were we were asked you know do you have any other ideas and and we actually managed with a number of teams 
with the colleagues to implement a number of these, these, uh, uh, these applications in different languages against a fraction of the price and within three to four months uh, and in the language of the country that, uh, that, that we want to use. And, and one of them was Brazil, by the way. Okay. Uh, because the time pressure was huge and, and already a lot of money had been spent in, uh, in other uh, in terms of improvement of the business processes, we did projects in which actually per branch office the, the reductions in FTEs were between 42 and 53 percent after implementation of the projects. It's compelling. That's really compelling. So it means that a, a lot of these people could then start to work in, 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 in functions that are actually earning money. Or uh, yeah, we help them to find a number, another job within uh, or outside the company. So I think there's no CEO in the world that isn't interested in having his cost reductions on, on FTEs, we, you know, we do uh, implement it between 40 and 50, 52 percent. No, again, I mean, it's a <laughs> good thing. And, and you've got a CEO which is supportive, I yeah, guess, which helps. Yeah, our CEO in the Netherlands is, is very, very supportive for innovation and, uh, and, and, and he also protects what we call internal mavericks that, that, that dare to say things that not everybody dares to say and dare to say. People are resistant, but as you said, if it makes sense, business sense, we need, they yeah. need to be able to have the flexibility to try things and yeah. come up with proof of concepts. Or yeah. proof. And I, I, I like the term protect yeah. you know, yeah. these people. And I think that what also helped is that we always put the, we always uh, implement these projects in small steps of three to four months. And I always say that, you know, every, actually after every three months, you have to demonstrate that you already, you know, made, made specific uh, contributions okay. to, the, to the bottom line. And we called it in Dutch after three months, you have to get your first flowers. Uh, because we're a flower country, so you have to get Correct. your first flowers. And that also means that if you don't do big projects, but a number of small projects, mm -hmm. that it's also easier to change direction yes. or to... Uh, and, and the users and, and, and the business people love to do this way of development because they are actually part of the interactive development of the applications. Yeah. And so they, they have the feeling it's, it's their thing also. Yeah, yeah, the more involved, the, uh, yeah, the better yeah. the adoption of yeah. the service, yeah. Yeah, obviously. And so they mm. co-design actually the applications and they see what they get almost immediately. And so there's not a big difference between what is described on paper or something <coughs> and then what the end result is, what they, what they see. Uh, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Thanks for your time, Tony. No, thank you very much. I was, I was happy to, uh, to uh, finally uh, meet you in, the, in person. And uh, I really look forward uh, to our, forward, uh, to our uh, collaboration in different areas like uh, Web 2.0 and, and, and a lot of other things in which you have a lot of experience. Well, I'll be happy to contribute uh, whenever I can. Uh. I'm sure we'll find a way yes, to share and uh, to work together in the next uh, few months. Thank you very much. So thanks, Tony. Thank thanks. you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.